Good day, students. I am Elias Budinho, a merchant here in Philadelphia. Let me share with you the complexities of our relationship with Britain and how our ambitions often clash with their interests. You see, our leaders in Europe, they seek to expand their empires, control trade, and assert their dominance over the new world. But we, the colonists, we have different aspirations. We yearn for self-rule, for the freedom to trade with whom we please, and for the right to govern our own lands. Take the Navigation Acts, for instance. These laws are designed to ensure that all trade between England and her colonies benefits the Crown. They demand that all goods transported to and from the colonies be carried on English or colonial ships, and that certain commodities, like tobacco and sugar, be shipped only to England. As a merchant, this greatly affects me. It limits whom I can trade with and increases the costs, reducing our profits. Many of us have turned to smuggling as a way to circumvent these restrictions. It's not just about profit, it's about the principle of being able to trade freely. But our grievances go beyond trade. The Crown's attempts to exert control over our lands, like the revocation of Massachusetts Charter, have fueled our desire for self-rule. This charter, a legal document granting certain rights to the colony, was revoked by King James II, and the Dominion of New England was established. This was seen as a direct attack on our autonomy and our rights as Englishmen. Our resistance to these imperial controls is deeply rooted in our local experiences of self-government. For generations, we have been governing ourselves, making our own laws and deciding our own fate. The idea of an external power dictating our lives is anathema to us. Moreover, the Enlightenment has greatly influenced our thinking. It's crucial to understand the profound impact of the Enlightenment on our thoughts and actions here in the colonies. This remarkable movement, which began in Europe and swiftly made its way to our shores, has been a beacon guiding our resistance against imperial control. The Enlightenment, at its core, champions reason, individualism, and a skepticism of traditional authority. Philosophers like John Locke, whose writings are widely read and discussed here, argue that all men are born with certain natural rights, including life, liberty, and property. Locke's theory of the social contract, the idea that governments are formed by the consent of the governed and must respect their rights, is revolutionary. It challenges the very foundation of imperial authority and justifies our resistance. In our colonies, these ideas take on a life of their own. They resonate deeply with us, as we have long experienced a degree of autonomy in our local governments. We have tasted self-rule, and Locke's ideas affirm that what we aspire to is not just desirable, but a natural right. Moreover, the Enlightenment promotes the idea of questioning and challenging established norms and institutions. This critical thinking aligns with our growing frustration over policies like the Stamp Act and the Townshend Acts, which we see as unjust impositions by a government an ocean away, a government that does not represent us. Our resistance, therefore, is not just a reaction to specific laws or taxes. It's a fundamental clash of ideologies. On one side, is the traditional belief in the divine right of kings and the supremacy of the British Parliament. On the other is this new Enlightenment thinking that champions the rights and liberties of the individual and the notion that governments should serve their people, not the other way around. The Enlightenment's emphasis on knowledge, education and intellectual discourse also fuels our resistance. In our coffee houses and meeting halls, ideas are exchanged and debates are held. These are not just idle talks. They are the bedrock upon which we build our understanding of our rights and the legitimacy or illegitimacy of the power exerted over us. In essence, the Enlightenment is the intellectual underpinning of our resistance. It gives us a framework to articulate our dissatisfaction, to argue our case, and to envision a different future. 
a future where we are self-governing and where our rights are respected. So, my young friends, as you can see, our relationship with Britain is complex and fraught with tension. Our goals and interests often clash with theirs. They see us as subjects to be controlled and taxed, while we see ourselves as free individuals with the right to govern ourselves, to trade freely, and to practice our religion as we see fit. This struggle is not just about policies and laws, it's about our identity as Americans. Thank you for listening, and I hope this gives you a clearer understanding of the challenges we face in these trying times.